Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. This is W.C. Tuttle's famous adventure story of Hashknife Hartley and Sleepy Stevens. Starring Frank Martin as Hashknife Hartley and Barton Yarborough as Sleepy Stevens. Here now is the creator of these rough-and-tumble cowboys, W.C. Tuttle himself, ready to begin today's story called Range War. Howdy, folks. Hashknife Harley and Sleepy Stevens are riding through the fertile Awa Dulcet Basin on their way to Clarkdale. At the south end of the basin, they come across a half-completed cabin on the bank of the river, and right near the cabin, they spy a young man washing up at a small spring. Sleepy turns to his tall saddle partner and observes, That young fella sure did pick yourself out a right nice place for a cabin, didn't he, son? Mm. Plenty of water and shade, good grazing. Yeah. wonder why this section of the basin's never been settled before. This grazing land's as good as any you'll find on the whole territory. Oh, it sure is. Howdy, friend. Hello there. Fly down and join me. I'm just about to rustle up some vittles. Thank you, we will. Yeah, thank you. Vittles, man said. I'm so hungry and dry and squeaking like a dry hub on a borax wagon. Yeah. <laughs> Glad to have company. It's kind of lonesome out here alone. My name's Clint Collison. Grub will be ready in a few minutes. Well, my name's Hartley, and this here feller with a if I don't eat in a minute, I'll keel over expression, Stevens. <laughs> Generally referred to as Sleepy. All right, Clint. <laughs> Hello, hi. Right. Sleepy, let's slip a bridles off and let the horses water. Why, well, sure thing, sir. Well, nice location you got here. Uh, homesteading? Yeah. As soon as the cabin's finished, I'm sending for my wife. She's over at Wickenburg. Been married two months now. Well, congratulations, Clint. All right, here, here. Head for the creek. Here. Well, looks like you got a good start here. Those are some of the best-looking shorthorns I've ever seen. Oh, they sure are. With this grass and water, you ought to make yourself a fortune before you can get your family half-raised. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind that one bit. <laughs> of course not. Say, Clint, looks like you'll need some help with those roof beams. Too heavy for one man to handle. Yeah, they are. I've been wondering how I was going to manage them alone. Oh, well, Ash Knight, you think maybe... Sure thing, Sleepy. Clint, Sleepy's horse threw a shoe, and we was heading to Clarkdale to get him reshod. We could drop back by this way tomorrow and give you a hand of them beans. Hey, thanks. That'd be a real help. Then I could... Uh-oh. Looks like we got company. Uh-huh. Friends of yours? No. Never saw them before. What do you think you're doing here? Why, building my cabin. You can't do that. Not on Mr. Taggart's land. Well, just who are you, Bo Deadly? Name's Dorcas. I'm Mr. Taggart's foreman. No? Uh -huh. Taggart owns this property? I'm Taggart. No, I don't own it, but I've always intended to file on it. Been grazing on it for over ten years now. Well, it belongs to me now, Mr. Taggart. If you care to, you can check my claim with the land agent at Clarkdale. I don't care to. You're a nester, a trespasser. Now, you better get Seems off. to me, Taggart, if you haven't filed on this land and Collison here has legal claim to it, then you're trespassing. Now, look, stranger, you better keep that long neck and nose of yours out of things that don't concern you. Speaking of noses, Dorcas, I've been looking at that beak of yours. I have seen better looking ones on red boar shorts in blue mud holes. Oh, you grin wrinkled monkey. <laughs> Not bad shooting, Sleepy. You won't be doing any drawing of that arm for a while. Mount up, Dorcas. Oh, but, boy, sir, are you going to... You heard me. <laughs> I've no use for nesters, and nobody's going to settle this section but me, savvy? So I'm warning you, Carlson, I am going to get this land you're squatting on if it's the last living thing I ever do. Now, come on, get up. If it's the last living thing I ever do. <laughs> you me. Huh? Well. Looks like you got yourself a mess of trouble, Clint. Yeah, and did you see the look on Taggart's face? <laughs> you could bottle it and sell it for paint remover. After promising to return and help Clint with his cabin, 
Hash knife and Sleepy Road on into Clarkdale and hunted up the blacksmith shop. Meanwhile, on the Taggart Ranch, Dorcas, the foreman, gets his sidekick, Monty, aside and tells him what had happened at the Collison cabin. No, my arm's all right, Monty. Just nicked. Yeah, but you should have seen old man Taggart's face. He turned purple. Yeah, and if the old man ain't filed on that land, and this Collison has, there ain't nothing the boss can do. That's right. There's nothing Taggart can do. But you and me, there's something we can do. Huh? What you mean, Dorcas? Look, I've been Taggart's ramrod for eight years now, and I'm getting mighty tired of herding his beef. What are you getting at? Well, why not go into ranching for ourselves? Oh, sure. What do we use for money? Collison's got about a hundred head of real prime shorthorns. Now, if we was to run off about half of them... Run them off? Rustle them? Say, they can hang you for that. Now, listen, will you? If half of Collison's herd disappeared, who'd he suspect right off? Well, you tag it, I guess. Sure, and that's the whole idea. And then we steal 50 of Taggart's cattle, and Taggart blames Collison. Yeah, yeah. Taggart and Collison start suspicion in each other. it's foolproof, I tell you. They'll go gunning for each other, and we'll be getting rich. Say, ain't that Clint coming his way? Yeah. Oh, ho, ho! Hartley, Stevens, am I glad to see you, too. Well, Clint, you look madder than a saddle gall grizzly. Did something happen? Well, I'll say something happened. Half my herd's been rustled. Well, you sure? Darn right, I'm sure. I didn't stop to count them, but at least half my stock's gone. Well, when did you find out? Just a few minutes ago. Russell, huh? Well, somebody's going to get his neck stretched in a new and improper length. Well, where are you heading for now in such a lather? To Taggart's place. You heard what he said yesterday. Well, if he thinks he can run me off without a fight, he's got another thing coming. Now, if you go pounding on a tagger spread all head up like you are now, you're, you're liable to run into more trouble than you can handle. Yeah, maybe me and Hash and I better ride along with you, Clint. Well, this ain't your fight, fellas, but I'd sure welcome someone to back my play. Oh, but we're in his fracas, too. Well, of course we are. Remember that Dorcas fella tried to draw on me. Besides, I wouldn't trust Taggart nor Dorcas no further than I could kick a hundred-pound anvil. Get up there, boy. Get up. Get up. Me out. Don't talk like a crazy man. What would I want with your measly 50 head of cattle? Lord, man, I've got somewhere around 3,000. Taggart, yesterday you told me that... He's up, Clint. This kind of palaver ain't gonna solve nothing. You're right. Palavering won't solve nothing. Freeze, Jim. What? And don't none of you three make any sudden move or try to turn around. Good work, Monty. Keep him covered. Uh, Collison, I don't have your blasted cattle. I don't want them. And I don't like being called a rustler. So the three of you climb on them cayuses of yours and get off my land. And stay off, because I'll thrill you on sight if I ever see you on my spread again. <laughs> if Taggart only Shut knew. up, you fool. <laughs> you want the old man to hear you? Come on, Monty, down to the bunkhouse and keep your voice down. <laughs> we got him going really good. And now it's about the time for us to make another move, eh, Monty? Well, how about tonight? Why not? Come on in the bunkhouse and we'll plan it out. <laughs> Hit him while they're still shooting mad, huh? <laughs> <laughs> This oak here marks the beginning of Taggart's property. Yeah, uh-huh. That means that we're open to any and all shots Taggart or his cowhands might want to fling at. <laughs> Providing, of course, that they see you. Uh, all right. No, this is risky with the moon out full. And this here trail's leading straight to Taggart's South 40. I knew he was lying when he said he didn't have them short horns of mine. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he was. Maybe he wasn't. Oh, son. 
Well, we better stop with John and see about going through Taggart's herd and cutting out the cattle carrying Flint's brand. Uh-huh. Well, looks like he's headed over to that draw there and... Well, what's the matter, sir? You see something? No. No, I feel something. Feel something? What do you mean? Earth's vibrating. Must be cattle or horses on the move. Well, naturally. It's your range land. That ain't what I mean. This is a herd or a bunch running together. Listen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I hear them. Ain't stampeding, so somebody must be herding them. If Taggart's running off the rest of my cattle... Can't be that. The sound's coming from up ahead of us. Yeah. Well, hey, now, what are we going to do? Better get out of sight. Remember, we're on Taggart's property, and he's given orders to shoot if we're caught trespassing. Uh-oh. I'm commencing to get that here come trouble feeling again. Let's head for that stand of Cottonwood, John. It'll be dark enough to hide it there. Go, oh, get up, get up, get up. Get up. Go, go on if this ain't the craziest going on I ever did. Hash knife. My horse just went lame. Lame? Can't he still carry you? No. I don't think it's hurt bad, but he's favoring his left leg a little too much. Uh, well, we can slow down with him now. Turn him loose and climb up behind me. And hurry up, Clint. Them cattle and whoever's hazing them is getting awful close. Hurry up now. Come on. Yeah. All set, Clint? Yeah, let's go. And just hope that nag 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 of yours finds his way home. Get up, hey, get up. Well, they won't see us any second more. No. No, we can't tell who they are for the dust. Have enough, Sleepy? More coffee, hash knife? No, no, thank you. Oh, wait. Hash knife? I'm kind of worried about that horse of mine. He ain't showed up yet. Yeah, that ain't good. If Taggart... There ain't no if about it, son. Here it comes now. With that cold-eyed Dorcas feller and another cow hand and Clint's horse. Uh-oh. Bats in the far now. Allison, I'm returning your property. There's your horse. Now, give me back my cattle. Huh? Your cattle? That's what I said. Allison, yesterday you called me a cattle thief. Well, today I'm calling you one. We come after them shorthorns you stole last night. We ain't leaving without them. Now, hold on a minute, Taggart. Flynn didn't rustle no cattle last night. Me and Sleepy was with him all the time. He didn't anymore... And you're in on this, too, huh? Me and Monty here found Collison's nag and Mr. Taggart's South 40. Yeah, when was that? Last this morning. Night. Well, well, maybe he got spooked up during the night and wandered over on your freight. All saddled and bridled? Oh. Last night, 50 prime shorthorns of mine were rustled from the cutting-out pen of my South 40. Collison's horse, which has gone lame, was found there. Explain that. Why, I... I, um... I don't understand. Of course, he can't explain because... Hold he... it, horse face. Well, you, you talking to me? No, you're a hog nose, remember? I said hold it, horse face, or money, whatever your name is. You ain't getting no behind the back drop on us this time. Go on, Taggart. You was saying... I am saying that you three trespassed on my property last night and stole 50 head of my cattle. It's pretty plain now... The only reason Collison accused me of stealing 50 head of his mangy critters was to give himself an excuse to raid my spread. Now, hold on. If you think... Well, you made your raid and I returned your horse. Now I want them cattle of mine. But I can't do this. If you don't... Now, the next one will be about six ribs high. You two are bellering so loud a man can't think straight. It seems to me that's that's what we all got to do now. Think straight. Yeah, or shoot straight. Sleepy. Well... Now, listen to me, Clint. You too, Taggart. This kind of war talk can lead to only one thing. One of you is going to jangle your spurs so loud the other will go for his gun, and and then no telling what will happen. If there's any shooting, I get first chance at hog nose here. But will you shut up for one minute, sleeping? All right. Now then, 
I suggest, and, and this 45, which I still just happen to have in my hand, agrees. So we bring this little meeting to a close, giving all and sundry a chance to cool off. Well... I ain't through uh, yet, Taggart. Let's, uh... Let's set a time, say, tomorrow noon. And a place, say, under them two oaks at the edge of the river. Get together again and see if we can settle this thing without no one getting killed. Now, does that suit your fancy? Well, all right. Flint? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. But if Taggart... Rain in, rain in, Clint. Tomorrow's the time for that. Oh, oh I am plum wore out. Uh, me too. Well, anyways, we've got the roof beams all set. Gosh, I'd never made it without you fellas' help. Oh, glad to give you a hand, Clint. And the I'm next time... I'm too lazy to reach, Hash and I. Light me my after supper smoke, will you? Oh, oh, for here, here's a match. I ain't gonna move till about... we get moving in a few minutes. Yeah, and then we... huh? Oh, what you mean in a few minutes? What have you got in mind, Hash Knight? Well, I think there are a few loose ends this whole business that could stand a little looking into. Oh my, here we go again. Well, what's bothering you, sir? Well, for one thing, I. I don't think Taggart nabbed them cattle at Clint. Now, wait a minute. You heard Well, let, let me finish. Well, get to the point, son. What you driving at? Just this, cowboy. We know Clint's been rustled from, and we know Clint didn't rustle any of Taggart's cattle. Which sure means somebody's working both ends against the middle and filching cows off of both Clint and Taggart while they're gunning for each other. Well, if that ain't a triple-plated, double-banded, seven-sided, well, silver... Well, could be, maybe. But you heard what Taggart said the first day he stopped here. Yeah, yeah, I heard. And I also heard something else that makes my suspicions seem a little more in suspicion. Well, what's that? You remember when Taggart and his bulldogs was here this morning and I asked, when did they find Clint's horse? Yeah. Well, both Dorcas and Monty answered... Mm, simultaneous, you might say. One said, last night, and the other said, this morning. Well, what about it? Well, two fellers find a, a horse together. Both say they found the horse hours apart. Does that seem a little queer to you? Well, I'll say it's queer. Queer in a cork anchor. Hmm. I ain't sure I'm keeping up with you. Dorcas and Monty say they found your horse on Taggart South 40. And with Taggart stock being rustled from there... It just about adds up that Dorcas and Monty must have been the ones that run off with Taggart's cows. And very likely Clint's, too. Well, well, well let's go get Yeah, it. let's saddle up and go on. Hold on a minute. We've got to get proof before we can go grabbing off anybody. Oh, well, how are we going to get proof? Well, most of the activity seems to have been on Taggart's cell 40. I was thinking we might mosey over that way and sort of keep an eye peeled and ear cocked for Dorcas and Monty. You know, with this meeting coming up tomorrow, they might just get anxious and overplay their hands. If we're lucky, we might find out something. Let's go. Well, uh, maybe you better stay here and keep eye on your place, Clint. Doggone if you wasn't right, Hash Knife. Dorcas and his no-good sidekick... Keep your voice down, you knothead. You sure did call the turn, son. How did you know? Oh, take straining and... Opportunity, cowboy. All the Russell stock come from around a sow 40. Just sort of wait there, and sooner or later, whoever's been doing a thieving would have to go through there to wherever the cattle's is. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're going to now, huh? I don't know. If I guess right on Dorcas and Monty, we probably are. Whoa, easy, boy. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa. What did you stop for? If you'd been watching instead of gabbing, you'd you'd notice they're out of sight. Turn into that canyon up here. I guess we better go on foot. Horses might make. Hey, hey, you. Well, you jug-headed, slow trotting hip a rosterish you fool. You would open your big bazoo and beller like a jackass right now. Come on, sleepy head for the canyon. We can't let them two get out there and give us a slip. Come on, get up here. Get up. Here. Uh oh. Here it comes. We better. No, Sleepy, hold your fire to get closer. Come on, Abbott, run! Get run, you long-legged, loud-mouthed old man! Get up, get up, get up, get up! Oh, oh, oh. 
Oh, 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 I was them bullies. Now, keep down. Don't shoot unless they do. Got you, son. Got you. Did you hear that? Them cows up in the canyon. Guess we found a missing stock, all right. Yeah, uh-huh. Right now, I'm more interested in where a hog nose and horse face is hiding. Keep your shirt on, cowboy. They'll have to make a play sometime. And this is the only way out. Yeah, I guess so, but... You... Oh, you got one of them, Sleepy? Drop in guns and walk this way, both of you. Throw with your hands up. All right. Just don't go get trigger happy. How about the cattle, son? We gonna get them? Nah, now, cowboy, I'll keep. Taggart and Clinton come after him tomorrow. Well, Dorcas and Marty. And ain't Taggart gonna get a big old surprise. Evening, fella. Ah, uh, shut up. <laughs> I sure wish you two fellas would stay and meet my wife. She'll be here by the time the cabin's finished. Which shouldn't be in less than a week. If it ain't, I'm going to fire every last one of them hands of mine that's working on it. <laughs> well, thanks, Clint, Mr. Dagger, but me and Sleepy just couldn't stay put in one place that long. Well, oh. don't just stand there. Get to moving, Gabby. <laughs> Listen again next week at this time when Sagebrush Theater will bring you another story of the Old West recorded from the library of radio programs of many years ago. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.